Good morning, good afternoon everyone, whatever time zone you are in today. And welcome to today's webinar called Compute Library Optimizing Computer Vision and Machine Learning on ARM. My name is Gemma Paris. I'm in charge of Developer Advocacy at ARM and today I am the moderator of this webinar. You'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You can see it on the right hand side menu. You can send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these questions and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And now, I would like to introduce you to our webinar speaker, Roberto Millat. He is our Director of Software Product Management. Roberto and his team are the ones who kicked off the Compute Library for ARM from its very inception. So we have with us the perfect speaker for this topic. And personally, I am very excited about it. And with no further delay, I am handing over to Roberto. Thank you, Gemma, and a warm welcome to everyone that is joining here us today for this live webinar. My name is Roberto Miat, and I'm the Director of Product Management in the Mobile Compute Business Line. In this webinar, I will talk to you about deploying optimized computer vision and machine learning software on ARM processors. Mobile compute continues to evolve in many exciting new directions. Computer vision, machine learning, artificial intelligence, mixed reality, which comprises of augmented reality and virtual reality. These are all great buzzwords, but also great technologies. Most important than all, they all bring enormous opportunities to all of us. Now, if you're a developer, you just want to crack on with it. You want to focus your energy on innovation, on improving your applications. You don't want to spend your time re-implementing the same algorithms, on carrying out the same optimizations on multiple platforms, or rewriting common building blocks of software. The same applies to chip and device manufacturers. The focus should be on making products unique and better not on reinventing, reinventing the wheel. ARM works very closely with its partners throughout the supply chain and across all ecosystems. We do listen to our partners. And that's why about a year ago, we looked at uh, how we could better help the partnership and we decided to collect together all the pieces of software and useful code we had in-house that we developed over the years around computer vision image processing and machine learning. We packaged these and decided to make them available to the overall, to the broader community. Our objective was to make the deployment of computer vision and machine learning on ARM processors as easy and convenient as possible. And that's why just over a month ago, we released the compute library. So what is the compute library? The Compute Library is a collection of optimized low-level functions for ARM CPU and ARM Mali GPUs. It contains image processing functions, computer vision and machine learning functions optimized for the ARM architectures. And you can see on the table on the right a list by category of what you'll find inside the library. There are basic arithmetic and mathematical functions, there are convolutions, common filters, column manipulation functionality, feature extraction and feature detection, image reshaping and so on. And most recently we also started to add machine learning building blocks as well as matrix multiplier functions. The overall objective of this library is to enable faster deployment of computer vision and machine learning on ARM. We have therefore implemented optimized functions using NEON intrinsics for the CPU path, 
We use Neon Intrinsics because this enables our code to be recompiled for multiple architectures. So the code is well optimized, but can also be recompiled for ARMv7 and ARMv8 architecture, both for 32-bit and 64-bit. The GPU path of our library is written using the OpenCL API from Kronos. That makes the code recompiled, recompilable for any OpenCL implementation device, but is optimally going to perform on Mali GPUs. We're also working on some integration with common machine learning frameworks, such as TensorFlow and CAFE. The library is publicly available, and you can see the link at the bottom of the slide. It is hosted in a GitHub repository that can be accessed through the developer portal on the ARM website. It is a full source code release. It is free of charge, and it is available under the very permissive MIT license. So what are the benefits of using the compute library? Perhaps the best way to illustrate this is to compare the library with what was available before we released it in the open source community. Now, if you ever wrote computer vision code, you most likely would have used the OpenCV framework. OpenCV is an awesome library. It's a great framework. It does everything and more that you might ever need to do prototyping or early development for computer vision. However, OpenCV is somewhat limited in terms of supporting embedded platforms and the ARM architecture. The number of functions to support NEON is limited and scattered, and the performance could be better. For what concerns OpenCL, the functions included in OpenCV are not very friendly towards embedded GPUs. And this is what the performance of the compute library brings compared to what's currently available in OpenCV. Here we're looking at some workloads for computer vision. We categorized functions by group uh, and compared them on multiple platforms. For simplicity, we're only representing here the test result on the Huawei Mate 8 device which feature a Kirin 950 system on chip from silicon. This is an octa-core platform with a cluster of four A72 and four A53 processors. The workloads are actually running on the large cluster, so they're running on the Cortex-A72. In this case, we are running a workload in a single thread, therefore this is running on a single core. The code was compiled for AARC64, and dynamic voltage and frequency scaling has been disabled for the purpose of this testing. We see a similar behavior across platforms, and the same uh, counts for CPU and GPU versions of the code. Generally, what we see is that Sobol operators performs around four times faster when utilizing the compute library functions from ARM compared to the Neon version of the code in the OpenCV library. For what concerns histograms, optical flow, cutting edge, and Gaussian pyramids, in general, the functions in the compute library from ARM perform around 200 times percent better. What about computer, what about machine learning? Our research team has been investigating machine learning workloads in order to determine what should be the functions we should optimize to improve these type of workloads. We did an investigation using the CAFE framework, which is a very popular open source framework for neural networks. And we look at three very common benchmarks. We looked at AlexNet, ConvNet, and Lenet. Now, AlexNet is a very large network that classifies objects and images into one of a thousand possible classes. ConvNet is a small-scale network that classifies images into ten possible categories. And finally, Linet is a medium-sized network that categorizes handwritten digits into ten possible categories. So what, we, what we have here is a 
selection of workloads of neural networks of uh, various degrees of complexity and uh, size. What we observed, what the research team has observed, is that typically between 50 and 80 percent of the computation revolve around matrix multiplication. In this particular case, SGEM, single precision matrix multipliers, which consist into multiplying together two floating point matrices. There were also a few other highlight functions, such as power functions and the uh, uh, conversion of dimension of matrices. And uh, everything else was more or less lost in the, in the noise. So what we, the takeaway for us here was that uh, matrix multiplication was a sensible hotspot to focus our optimizations on. What about non-visual machine learning? In this case here, as you can see represented on the diagram on the right, we have looked at automatic speech recognition. Uh, this is a DNN-based type of workload. And in this case here, we also found that matrix multiplication would give the best return in terms of where our optimization should go. So with this uh, information in hand, we focused our work on optimizing convolutions and matrix multipliers. And the results that we were able to achieve compared to what is currently available in OpenCV were quite astonishing. Again here we are showing you the results on a specific platform, the Mate 8, same configurations as before. Uh, generally speaking, the performance we observed across a multiple uh, set of uh, target platforms uh, went between a 10x and 20x mark, depending on the number of cores and the CPU and GPU configurations utilized. In this case here, on the single core A72, 64-bit compilation, not DVFS, we have seen a approaching 15x uplift for convolution operations and around 17x performance improvement for SGEM. So what you can see here is that you can get a great deal of performance from an existing silicon part by utilizing optimized code. So this is all very good. Um, but who has been using the library since its launch? We launched the library just over a month ago, and the uptake has been astonishing. In just over a month, we had over 16,000 readers of our launch blog. In just over a month, we had over 2,500 unique visitors accessing our source code repository and browsing through the code. And again, in just over a month, we had over 260 clones of our repository. That, that, that's great. That's impressive. Now, a large number of our partners, uh, and by partners I'm referring to commercial partners, have also been using the compute library for evaluation and benchmarking, as well as product development. So let's have a look at some of them. This list of logos want to show you a selection of uh, our valued partners that have been utilizing the ARM Compute Library. As you can see here, we have a very good mix of uh, partners. You can see important OEM and OEM verticals, as well as silicon vendors who target mobile segments, as well as home and surveillance markets. There are some important software vendors, some augmented reality services and solution providers, algorithm developers, sensor vendors, some search engine players. And as you can see, there is a very good mix of uh, established and common known players as well as startups. One I would like to highlight is the OpenAI Lab, which is a joint venture between ARM and Thundersoft in China. It's a joint venture which has been set up in order to uh, support the growing ecosystem for AI and IoT in the China region. Now, if you would like to know more about the collaboration that we have with these partners, or if you would like to be someone that uh, 
work with them and, and would like to know how to get your logo included in this type of slide, please get in touch. Now for the rest of the presentation, I would like to take you through some examples of users of the library in the real world and how some of our partners have, uh, have been able to extract the best value out of using the Compute Vision library. First of all, let's look at uh, Thunderview. Thunderview is a team part of a software vendor from China called Thundersoft. Thundersoft is a software and services vendor who specializes in camera technologies. Arm and Thunderview have been working very closely for many years. Now the guys at Thunderview have been developing a mobile app that provides real-time food calories counting that is deployed as an application on smartphone devices. And this is what it looks like. The screenshot in the middle represents the viewfinder of your mobile device and the application in operation. You can see the food, in this case pumpkin seeds. You can see on the right that the application has been accurately determining what the food is and it's providing an uh, estimation of the calorie count. How does this application work? Well, the camera the application takes its input from the camera module. It supports any type of camera module. Uh, it uses the camera module to calculate an estimation of the volume of the food in front of you. So if you have a stereo module, that's best because using stereo matching, it's able to give a, a more accurate estimation of the volume. But it also works with a, a single CMOS sensor uh, by using uh, some proprietary algorithms to estimate the volume of the food. It's less accurate, it requires more calibration, but it also works pretty reliably. So the first step is to uh, identify the food, estimate its volume. The image part of the algorithm will then segment the food from its background and uh, feed that information on a part of the algorithm that will look at identifying what it is. And using some uh, training or network, it will determine what the food is, in this case, pumpkin seeds. And correlating the volume estimation of the food and what the food has been determined to be, it looks at a on-device database and calculates the estimated calorie count for the food you have in front of you. Now, the guys at Thunderview have been doing a good job at developing their own application and carrying out initial optimizations for mobile devices. But at some point they reached out to ARM looking if they could get some further help in optimizing the application uh, to be more efficient and also to improve user experience. We gave them access to our source code in the library uh, and they made very good use of it. And this is the performance improvement that the guys at Thunderview were able to extract. So on the left you can see the food recognition part of the algorithm, whilst on the right you have the food volume estimation part of the algorithm. For the food recognition phase, the guys at Thunderview did a straight replacement to the functions that part of their algorithm with equivalent function from the compute library. And they were able very quickly to get a 10% performance improvement out of the box. For what concerned food volume estimation, they did a similar exercise and were able to get a 6% performance improvement. Now, perhaps these numbers don't sound that great, uh, but considering that the time spent was limited to uh, a couple of days and uh, the exercise was just one of replacing functions straight, this is pretty good return on investment. The real performance improvement was achieved when the guys at Thunderview decided to offload some of the computation onto the GPU and therefore leveraged on the OpenCL component of the library. And in doing so, they more than doubled the performance, the full volume estimation part of their application, achieving an 126% performance improvement. 
So this is a very good example of how you can take existing software on existing hardware and extract a significant performance improvement simply by using better code. And this is the type of benefits you want to provide to developers in the community today that want to target ARM CPU and Mali GPU to accelerate their computer vision and machine learning workloads. The second example I would like to talk to you about is our work around the TensorFlow framework. I will talk also about some of the collaboration between ARM and Google in this area. Now, ARM has been collaborating with the Google TensorFlow team from some time in a variety of activities. To summarize the work that has been going on, uh, here's a list. So first of all, we spent some time optimizing low precision matrix multipliers. I will explain more detail on that in the coming slides. We have a team currently working on porting the TensorFlow framework on mobile platforms and looking at how we can further optimize the architecture of the TensorFlow framework to better target ham CPU and Mali GPUs. We've also been looking at integrating the computer library with the TensorFlow framework by adapting some of the functions and uh, their interface to better fit with the TensorFlow framework. We've been also adding support for new asynchronous graph backend. And we're also working on optimizing and porting the Eigen library via SQL. Now, SQL is a uh, specification from the Kronos group which enables you to write your application using single source C++ and having this code then transparently map onto an heterogeneous platform using OpenCL. So let's look into this with a little bit more detail. The first uh, part of our collaboration with the Google TensorFlow team happened last year and was led by our research team and this is focusing on improving machine learning on existing shipping devices. So our research team has been looking at uh, optimizing metrics multiplication on the Cortex-A53 processor as well as the Cortex-A57 and A72. You can see from the diagram on the bottom right part of the screen how effective the optimizations have been. On the A53 we've seen nearly 20% performance improvement, whilst on the A57 we see an, uh, an improvement approaching 40%. Now this code uh, has been well received and has been upstreamed into the Gemlow P library. The Gemlow P library is a library which is sourced into the TensorFlow framework and therefore uh, is benefited from any application that uses TensorFlow. In this case here, some applications that benefited from this include the Google Translate engine uh, that since the July update has been using our optimized functions, as well as the image recognition and some machine translation applications that you find on standard Android devices today. The next step in our activities in this area revolved around evaluating the Aiken library and looking at area where we could provide some optimizations. Aiken is a C++ template library for linear algebra and it's heavily utilized by TensorFlow. So it's a good place to start and a good place to feed your optimizations into. The first step of our activity was to compare the functions in Aiken with the same functions in our compute library. We've taken a workload consisting of a chain of 64 SGEM tests which reflect what is uh, typically done in one inference room through the Inception V1 model. And we tested this on a variety of platforms. So we ran the test on a Firefly board which consists of a quad-core Cortex A17. We also targeted a Huawei P9 platform, which is a quad-core A72 and quad-core A53. 
and a Huawei Mate 9, where we have a quad core A73 and a quad core A53. For what concerns the GPU side, as you can see, we have two mid-card implementations with a 760 and a 880, and we have one Biforce implementation, which is our newest architecture in the shape of the MP8 G71 on the Huawei Mate 9. So pretty comprehensive set of platforms with a variety of uh, target processors. In all cases, DVFS was disabled. And here's some of the performance results we were able to observe. So the first column is the name of the platform. The second column shows you the absolute performance that we recorded uh, for the using the compute library version of the workloads. The third column shows you the performance using OpenCL. So this is with GPU acceleration. In this case here, we are including all overheads in our number. So this includes driver loading and setup, setup of the accelerator, moving data back and forth to the GPU, uh, flushing the results out and synchronizing the results before reading them back and so on. So all the overheads associated with uh, driving an accelerator, which we felt it's the right thing to do because we wanted to show a real life comparison here. The fourth column shows you the performance that was achieved with uh, the workload using the standard Eigen functions. Um, now, the speed up you observed on Neon, so this is comparing the Eigen library with our compute library, shows a very promising uplift out of the box. So we're seeing a 13% uplift on Firefly a very good 36% improvement on the Huawei P9, which is the running on the Quad Core A72 cluster, the big cluster, and a 26% improvement on the on the Mate 9, this case running on the A73 big cluster. So very strong, very good results, considering that this is out of the box performance you're getting here. So, this looks very good, however, with all things the devil is in detail, so let's have a look at the detail. What we're showing here is a selection of the results. This is the, a set of the largest matrices on the, on the workload. So this is one end of the spectrum in terms of uh, metric sizes. The on, the on the first column on the left, you have the, the name of the, the matrix, just to remind us of what the size of the workloads uh, are. So just a reminder, the, the S gem is essentially a multiplication between two matrices. Therefore, the M and N numbers represent the two dimension of the output matrix, uh, and the K number represents one of the dimensions uh, of the two input matrices, respectively, the K would be the, uh, the width of the first matrix and the height of the second matrix. So same type of numbers here, you can see that the speed up is actually quite remarkable and, and uh, much superior than average uh, in general. You can see there are some uh, 2x, some 3x, even a 4x for what concerns the performance optimization on NEON, which is the, the fair comparison to be made here as we are comparing straight on NEON functions between the two libraries. And a very strong performance uplift also on the OpenCL version. It's using a different processor on a different uh, dispatch model, but still shows you that either processor gives you a very good uplift which utilizing the compute library. Now this is all good. However, if we look at small size matrices, things are a little bit different. In this table here, we're seeing the, uh, the other end of the spectrum in terms of uh, the workload. So we're looking at the smallest matrices that we utilize. And what you see here is that actually Eigen is better than the compute library. Uh, 
nearly twice as fast uh, in some cases. Um, there is a 2.73 there, which we're not quite sure what happened. We're still investigating. So it's probably just a glitch in our measurements. So not so good in this case. However, if we take a step back and look at the workload as a whole, generally the compute library does perform better than Hagen. And in fact, it's the largest matrices that occupy the majority of the computation time. And therefore, that's the right area for focusing the optimizations. So these results that we've just seen focus on the multi-threaded version. So we're using four processors, using a thread pole to dispatch the jobs. How about single-threaded? Similar type of performance uplift. We analyzed the performance on single-threaded performance, and we have observed a uh, very good uplift. Uh, in this case, on the, on the Firefly, which is a A17 processor, we've seen an 18% performance uplift. On the P9, which is a A72 processor, we've seen a 15% uplift. And the same for the A73 on the Mate 9. So again, the compute library, better than Eigen in general for this type of workloads. Uh, and also, in the case of a single threaded performance, we are seeing that the things are much better uh, on uh, small matrices too. And here is the third and final example I would like to talk to you about, HOG and SVM. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this type of uh, algorithms, but just as a quick reminder, HOG is a histogram of gradients. Essentially, this is a dense feature extraction algorithm, uh, meaning that it uh, operates for every single picture, every single pixel in your image. And it is utilized in order to determine shapes within an image. So it uses gradients, and uh, it's used to extract things such as objects. Now, the support vector machine is a supervised machine learning algorithm that can be used for binary classification. So you train your SVM algorithm to say, is the input yes or no part of a category? So in this case here, we're seeing uh, a division between person and not a person. And these two algorithms are typically used together. So you can chain together HOG and SVM. You can use HOG to extract what could be a candidate person, and then put that through a SVM-based classifier in order to determine if it is or not a person. And that's exactly what we have done in our test. We have implemented a HOG and SVM chain, and we did this utilizing the stock OpenCV functions for NEON, as well as the NEON functions in the compute library. And here's what the results look like. In this case, we use the Firefly platform with the quad-core A17, and uh, we use Linux as an operating system. The table on the right shows you the performance speed up that the compute library was able to deliver. As you can see, for a, four, a 640 by 480 image, we were able to achieve a 7x uplift in performance compared to using stock OpenCV functions. And uh, for larger images, such as a 1280 by 960, we were able to achieve even a 14x performance uplift. That, that's great. What's even more important is that that is not just a performance benefit and uh, efficiency benefit, but it also enables you to use this use case in real time. The fact now that you're able to do uh, performance which is less than 33 milliseconds means that you're able to do the HOG and SVM chain a faster rate than 30 frames per second, something which is not possible using the stock OpenCV function for these algorithms.
So, in conclusion, mobile is at the heart of the artificial intelligence revolution. There's a large number of use cases and exciting applications that are coming to mobile today. And we feel that the mobile platforms are a fantastic vehicle to deploy this into the market. Heterogeneous mobile platforms, software libraries, and frameworks enable leading edge AI use cases today. And ARM is investing in these areas to make it easier to deploy these use cases in mobile. The compute library from ARM provides benefit in terms of performance, ease of programming, cost reduction out of the box, and there's a significant improvement in what was available before in the open source community. So my encouragement to all of you that have kindly joined us in this webinar today is to take advantage of this library and use it to deploy optimized computer vision and machine learning software on ARM today. Thank you, Roberto. It was a very insightful presentation. We are now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. So, Roberto, first question received. Does the library run on a small CPU like Cortex-M0 or M3, M4? Okay, thank you, Gemma. Um, actually, no. Uh, at this point today, the library only targets Cortex-A processors. The software is written using Neon Intrinsics, so it requires a Cortex-A architecture. Uh, in the future, we might be adding some support for cortex a but this is not currently in the plans. Okay. And another question on compatibility. Can I use it on older ARM versions, let's say ARM 9? Again, no. Uh, I'm thinking you're referring to, to old, old school ARM yeah. 9. In terms of architecture, the code will run on any processor that has the Neon engine. So ARM v7 and ARM v8 architectures and any future architecture will be deployed. One comment I would like to add on the previous question, the question about Cortex-M, is that although we don't have plans today to support Cortex-M class processors in our library, there are other options out there, and I encourage people to have a look at the CMSYS library, which includes some optimiza op optimization functions for Cortex-M class of processors. Thanks, Roberto. Next question. If there are functions like face recognition or face matching in OpenCV, will all these functions be available on the computer library too? Ask in a different way, is this a pure replacement of OpenCV? That's a very good question. So, no, this is not a replacement for OpenCV. Uh, OpenCV is a much larger library and framework uh, than what we're proposing here. What we have here in the computer library is a collection of low-level building blocks. Uh, we don't have plans today to integrate this in the in OpenCV, but one could uh, take our functions and, and integrate them themselves, in which case they would be able to uh, inherit the benefit of having our low-level functions uh, up the stack in OpenCV in some of the high-level algorithms. Um, if one wants to deploy more uh, high-level uh, algorithms like face detection and similar, there is an option which is the one of using what's in OpenCV and pull them on top of our library, or there's another option which is engage with some of our ISV partners, such as the ones that I showed earlier uh, in one of my slides, who develop by trade, they develop this type of applications and they have access to our library and are currently using it to, to accelerate the solutions. Right, because we had a similar question, like, do you have plans to integrate the functions in OpenCV? Yeah, yeah so, so as I said, uh, today we don't have plans to, to carry out the integration. We might do this in the future. Um, we're not closing doors at this, but uh, the, the immediate step for us was to supply a, a useful addition to the toolkit that any developer that does computer vision and machine learning today 
uh, has access to. So if you're doing computer vision or machine learning today, you can use OpenBLAST, you can use OpenCV, you can use whatever it's out there. And now you also have the computer library from ARM uh, at your disposal. Yeah, understood. On the last slides, there's a question. Is the support vector machine implementation to the SVM implementation in the library? Or was that just a test? In, uh, in this case, it was just a, a test. So this is not a something we are, we are using with the library at this point in time. It was just a quick proof, uh, proof of concept we wanted to, to showcase. We've taken a, a, a well-written version of HOG and SVM that one of our uh, smart graduates uh, developed and, uh, and carried out a portal using our functions and, and measured the performance gap. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, next question, can I integrate the library into my product? Uh, yes, of course. This is one of the primary reasons why we're making this library available. Uh, we, we want people to use it. The more, the better. And we're actually releasing this uh, full source code under a very permissive MIT license. Uh, and we encourage people to take the code, the whole library or the pieces they care about, use it, integrate it. The terms of the MIT license are such that you don't even have to talk to us about it. You can do what you want with the library. However, we do encourage feedback. We're really keen to know what uh, uh, improvement feedback you might have. And uh, uh, we're always keen to understand the use cases you're trying to enable. Mm. Thanks. We had a similar question that the library is uh, developed for SOCs. So yes. Um, another interesting question, actually, could you um, give some guidance as to when I should use the CPU and when the GPU? That's a very good question. So it's very subjective. It really depends on, on the workload. There's never a, a straight answer for, for, for this. Um, typically, we find that uh, in order to take it to see benefits from using an accelerator, you need to have a, a large and sustained type of, uh, of workload. And in that case, it might be worthwhile engaging the GPU and starting streaming work over to it. Uh, for the smallest workload, uh, typically keeping everything on the same device is the best plan. So that's where you would use the CPU. In the case of our library, uh, we're actually providing low-level functionality here. So you know, you can use any of the function for CPU and GPU, depending on the size of the workload and the complexity of the workload, one might be better than the other. So it's very subjective. Mm. All right. Uh, next question, Roberto. What other machine learning frameworks do you plan to support? So currently, we are engaging with uh, uh, in a few activities. The, certainly, as I mentioned, we are working on TensorFlow. We also started looking at CAFE, as well as CAFE2 from Facebook. We, we did have a browse through Paddle Paddle from Baidu. And uh, we are engaged with uh, some verticals uh, in order to see how we can look at improving their own uh, in-house frameworks. The key thing here is that it doesn't matter which framework you use. Ultimately, the, the set of functions, the common building blocks that uh, uh, we would optimize machine learning framework are common across them. Therefore, we're trying to make the, what we implement in our library as, as portable and applicable as possible across all machine learning frameworks. Cool. We have a comment received, and I thought to mention it out loud. Um, it is great to see such big improvement in performance for feature extraction algorithms. It will definitely help implementing efficient AR and slam applications on mobile devices. Roberto, do you have any comments on this comment? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to hear positive comments, of course. Uh, and yes, this is what we, what we are trying to do, help our partners uh, develop and deploy optimized algorithms and, and new applications uh, on ARM. So augmented reality and slam are certainly the areas, some of the areas where we want to see our library utilized and deployed, and are some of the use case areas that we think will play an important role in the future on mobile. Ah, great. Next question, where can I send my questions to? 
Yeah, so we have a, a developer forum on the developer, the ARM developer website. That's a good place to uh, to kick off discussions and ask your questions. Um, if you want something more specific, we have an email, email alias that you could utilize to send your questions. This is developer at arm.com. I repeat that again, developer at arm.com. Hope you get that one. So, next one, what are your plans for future feature releases? Okay, so we're going to, we have, we have a long and healthy roadmap for this library. We provide a release of the library once a quarter. Uh, the next release is scheduled for the middle of June. Um, and uh, that's where you're going to get some improvements in terms of uh, performance optimization of functions. There's going to be more work on inside the machine learning side of the library, uh, some performance improvement on the Bifrost architecture, and a lot of work that we've done based on feedback from developers and partners. And that's one important point I want to make. Uh, our roadmap and our priorities are shaped based on what our partners need. So we listen to our Silicon vendors, we listen to OEMs, we listen to developers, and we prioritize the work on what they need because we're doing this to, to help them create better products based on ARM. Mm. Right. Next, following question. Is ARM looking for partner collaboration on further development? Uh, yes, we're always open to engage with new partners uh, in a variety of levels. Uh, so if there is any, any activity or any project that you, you would like to explore potential collaboration or, or any areas you'd like to deploy the complete library that you'd like to talk to us about, you're very welcome. Uh, please drop a, a note to the developer at handle.com email alias and uh, yeah, we're happy to talk to you. Mm. Um, can I use the library with Android? Yeah, very, very good question. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we are testing the library on a multiple, multiple operating system. Android is a primary one for us. Uh, the library itself is operating system agnostic. It's a collection of low-level functions. So you have all the freedom you want to take the entire library, part of it, and integrate it inside your, your Android framework, your, uh, your Android platform. Mm. I thought we could clarify this. There was a question, is Firefly a microprocessor, a platform, or a product? It's a developer board. Cool. Perfect. Thank you, Roberto. And thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar and for all your questions and interest. We very much appreciate and value your feedback. So please fill up the survey you are going to see at the end of the webinar. And uh, today, we received a large uh, volume of questions. And we did not manage to answer all your questions, but we are going to do our best to come back to you. If you have any other questions, please continue to enter them in the questions pane, or alternatively, email developer at arm.com. As Roberto said before, developer at arm.com. And we will take care to come back to you. Also, you will receive a follow-up email within the next two days with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. So on behalf of ARM and our presenter, Roberto, we thank you very much for joining us today. And we wish you a great rest of the day.